Hello. The quotient of two quantities is called their ratio. A rational function is the quotient or ratio of two polynomials. Let us look at an example. Suppose my trip to work involves three kilometers of city traffic, which always takes me six minutes, which is one tenth of an hour. Subsequently, I have to drive 20 kilometers on the freeway with a speed v, which depends on the amount of traffic. Thus, the time on the freeway is 20 kilometers over v. What will be my average speed? Well, it is total distance divided by total time. The distance is 23 kilometers, the time spent is one-tenth of an hour for the city part and 20 over v for the part on the freeway. Thus, the average speed is 23 over one-tenth plus 20 over v. Multiplying both numerator and denominator by v, we obtain 23 v over one-tenth v plus 20. This rational function is a quotient of two linear polynomials. In general, rational functions are precisely those functions you can make with a variable, numbers, addition, multiplication and division. These functions can all be written as a fraction p over q, where p and q are polynomials. Of course, q cannot be the polynomial, which is always zero. Note that constant functions are also polynomials. So, by taking the, the denominator to be the constant polynomial q equals one, we see that any polynomial is also a rational function. Of course, those are not the rational functions that interest us in this video. You do get functions we could not define before, even in the simple cases where the numerator is constant or the denominator is just a power of x. Note that we cannot define a rational function at a point x where the, den the denominator equals zero. This means that the zeros of the denominator are not in the domain of the function. You can calculate with rational functions just as you are used to with ordinary fractions. In particular, if you want to write a sum of two rational functions as a single fraction, you have to put both terms over a common denominator. For example, if we add 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x squared plus 2, we use x minus 2 times x squared plus 2 as a common denominator. The result is x squared plus x over x minus 2 times x squared plus 2. Typically, factored expressions are easier to work with, so refrain from expanding the denominator unless you have a good reason to expand. In general, it is not easy to draw the graph of a rational function. A characteristic feature of graphs of rational functions are the asymptotes. For example, the function 2x squared plus 2x minus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1 has a horizontal asymptote for x to infinity. This means that for very large x, the graph approaches a horizontal line very closely. In this case, the line y equals 2. Notice that the graph also approaches this line for very large negative x. So it is also an asymptote for x to minus infinity. A rational function has a horizontal asymptote if the degree of the numerator is at most the degree of the denominator. You can find the location of a horizontal asymptote for a rational function by dividing both numerator and denominator by the largest power of x in the denominator. For very large x, the terms 1 over x, 1 over x squared, etc. tend to zero. So both numerator and denominator become a constant. In this way, you can determine the height of a horizontal asymptote. A rational function can also have vertical asymptotes. Consider f of x equals 1 over x minus 2. For x equal to 2, the denominator becomes 0 and the function is not defined. For x slightly more than 2, this becomes 1 over a small positive number, which is very big. For x slightly less than 2, it is 1 over a small negative number, 
which is large negative. Therefore, the graph has a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. A rational function can only have vertical asymptotes at zeros of the denominator. Now, consider g of x equals x minus 1 over x minus 1 times x minus 2. This can be simplified to f of x. However, g is not defined at x equals 1, whereas f is. Apart from this difference in domain, the functions are equal. In the graph, we denote the fact that 1 is not in the domain by adding an open circle at x equals 1. Notice that g has no vertical asymptote at x, x equals 1, even though this is a zero of the denominator. This is because the numerator also vanishes at x equals 1. Finally, consider the graph of x plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 1. For very large values of x, the 1 over x plus 1 becomes very small and the graph of the function thus approaches the line y equals x plus 2, similarly for very large negative x. The line y equals x plus 2 is called an oblique asymptote. A rational function can only intersect the x-axis if the numerator is zero. But beware! As you saw in a previous example, if numerator and denominator have the same zero, then this point is not in the domain of our function. Thus, it is not a zero of the rational function. The zeros of a rational function are precisely those zeros of the numerator for which the denominator is non-zero. The locations of the zeros can heavily influence what the graph of a rational function looks like. For example, compare x minus 2 over x minus 1 times x minus 3 to x over x minus 1 times x minus 3. Both graphs have vertical asymptotes at x equals 1 and x equals 3, the zeros of the denominator. Since the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, both graphs have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. But the first function has a 0 in between the two asymptotes at x equals 2, and the second function has a 0 to the left of either asymptote at x equals 0. Therefore, the two graphs are quite dissimilar. To summarize, rational functions are the quotient of two polynomials. A rational function can only be defined for the x values for which the denominator is unequal to zero. You add rational functions by making the denominators equal. The graph of a rational function often has asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes can be found by dividing both numerator and denominator by the highest power of x occurring in the denominator. Vertical asymptotes can be found by looking at the zeros of the denominator. The zeros of the rational function are found at the zeros of the numerator. Good luck with the exercises! <laughs>